Bill Nye went on CNN a few days ago to discuss the March for Science, and uh, of course they put a climate denier named William Happer up against him. Let's watch. Well, he was uh, very supportive of science. His uncle, uh, John Trump, was a physicist at MIT, and we talked a little bit about him. I knew about his work. So I don't think science has anything to fear from Mr. Trump. You, you also say, uh, Professor Hamper, that the world is getting greener and people should stop hyperventilating. Flesh that out for me, please. Well, well there's this myth that's uh, developed around carbon dioxide that it's a pollutant, but you and I both exhale carbon dioxide with every breath, so each of us emits about two pounds of carbon dioxide a day, so are we polluting the planet? Uh, Carbon dioxide is a perfectly natural gas. It's just like water vapor. It's something that plants love. They grow better with more carbon dioxide. And you can see the greening of the earth already from uh, the additional carbon dioxide mm -hmm. in the atmosphere. Bill, Bill, tell us what your reaction is to, uh, to what he's, he's saying there. And, and what's the m most prolific misconception about climate change? What he claims to not understand is the rate. It's the speed at which we're adding carbon dioxide. And I will say, much as I love the CNN, you're doing a disservice by having one climate change skeptic and not 97 or 98 scientists or engineers concerned about climate change. What you got to get is the speed at which things are changing. But that aside, the science march today is about the economy as well as the environment. Although it's Earth Day, and I was here for the very first Earth Day in 1970, if you suppress science, if you pretend that climate change isn't a real problem, you will fall behind other countries that do invest in science, that do invest in basic research. And it's interesting to note, I think, that Article 1, Section 8 of the U.S. Constitution refers to the progress of science and the useful arts. Uh, and useful arts in uh, 18th century usage would be what we would call engineering or city planning or architecture. Mm. So this is a very serious problem. When uh, Earth Day started in 1970, everybody's concerned about pollution. And uh, what happened a few years ago, the Environmental Protection Agency, which was started by Richard Nixon, who was a conservative president, and he started the Environmental Protection Agency for the greater good, not for political reasons. Well, let, let so, me... uh, so everybody understand that if we suppress science, the United States will not fare as well uh, on the international marketplace, and uh, we will lose business. Science is not like passing a law. You don't have a vote to see how many are for the law of gravity and how many are against. It, it's based on observations. And if you observe what's happening to, for example, the temperature, the temperature is not rising nearly as fast as the alarmist computer models predicted. You know, it's much, much less, it factors of two or three less. So the uh, whole basis for the alarmism is not true. It's, it's based on flawed computer modeling. That's completely wrong. And you don't vote on so, that. You know, enjoy, you know, say what you will, but you have it absolutely wrong. So uh, what happened to that heat, and he's cherry-picking a certain model, the heat ended up in the ocean. This is, this is not controversial in mainstream science, everybody. So let's, really, I encourage everyone to look at the facts. We've got an extraordinary situation here in the United States where climate change deniers have managed to introduce the idea that some uncertainty, say 2%, plus or minus 2% mm. about the temperature of the ocean is somehow equivalent to plus or minus 100%. Now everybody, science is political. We use politics to decide where to invest our intellect and treasure. But when it comes to climate change, that is not controversial in the scientific community any more than you made reference to the law of universal gravitation. So, sir, with some respect, I encourage you to cut this out so that we can all move forward and make the United States a world leader in technology. What we want are advanced wind turbines, advanced photovoltaics, advanced solar uh, concentrated uh, energy plants. And everybody, if we were to do that, we would have at least three million new jobs in the United States that could not be outsourced. 
We would not need to have a military on the other side of the world mm -hmm. defending what people call our oil. We could move forward and we could export this technology. We could be world leaders in this. Well, they, Instead of uh, wringing our hands and, and cherry picking data and pretending that this problem that's obvious to the scientific community is somehow not obvious to you. I believe that qualifies as a Bill Nye ass whooping. He laid the smack down on that dude. Uh, now, by the way, that guy for $250 an hour will produce, uh, you know, whatever science uh, a given corporation would want. There was a sting operation that uh, there were some environmentalists that, that they did, and they got this guy to admit, yeah, you give me 250 bucks an hour and I'll produce. You want, what, do you want a study that says a lot of carbon dioxide in the air is awesome? I'm on it. Just give me the money and we'll do it. He also took, you know, uh, thousands of dollars from... Uh, the oil industry, shock, shock. So, of course, uh, he's bought off, and Bill Nye's there talking against a, a dishonest actor here. Uh, so let's go through some of that. He said, um, you know, uh, people say carbon dioxide is a pollutant, but, you know, hey, we breathe it out all the time, so what, are we polluting the world? I love how he thinks that's like a gotcha. Like, humans can't do anything wrong. Now, obviously, you know, you have to breathe out, so there's a certain amount of emissions that are just <laughs> gonna happen no matter what. Animals produce carbon emissions, too. But the conversation is about the emissions that we can control and we can reduce. And, you know, we can fix effectively. But I always love this, oh, well, maybe it's a good thing the planet is getting greener, so a lot of carbon dioxide is awesome in the atmosphere. Some is good. Too much is not good because it leads to the greenhouse effect and runaway warming. And furthermore, it's, this idea could be debunked so easily. So, okay, you're, you think that there's no amount of carbon dioxide that is not a problem. Put a plastic bag over your head, breathe into it, and let me know how that turns out for you. Can't do that, can you? You know what'll happen. So, spare me. Uh, then... Then he goes on to the, it's a natural argument. Look, the it's natural argument needs to die. Because there's nothing natural about fucking all the excess, uh, you know, emissions we're pumping out into the atmosphere. But furthermore, even if that were true, hey, it's not, it's, uh, carbon dioxide is natural, what are you gonna do? You know what else is natural? Anthrax. <laughs> that is literally natural. It's created in, um... Like, animals who have been dead for a while, and the carcass has been in certain, like, conditions. If you cut it open and go in, you get anthrax. And, and you die. So, that's not an argument. It's not, like, a good point. Like, oh, it's natural. Oh, so is, uh, feces. Should you eat it? <laughs> Those, like, what are you saying? It's, it's natural. It's, 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 that's not a fucking debate ender. They think it's, like, a gotcha. No. Uh, and then, he does the old, uh... Uh, well, actually, no, Bill Nye jumps in and he talks about how well, this this is actually good for the economy because that's always the next argument of the climate science deniers. You're going to destroy the economy by trying to, like, save the planet. Uh, and the answer is no. You actually have a giant economic boom waiting to happen because you have all new inevitable patents coming in fields that have to do with, you know, wind, en wind energy, solar energy, geothermal, thorium. Like, all, there's all these different things that we can further experiment with, if not just flat out start building in many respects. So you have a new New Deal that's waiting to happen, you have a, a green economy, and you have all these jobs that are just waiting to come about. You just need to go down that path, but as of right now, big oil has a stranglehold on our government, so they drag their fucking feet, and they let us continue using oil and gas into oblivion as we continue to fuck up the planet and go further down the road of climate change. You know, there's a point of no return, and we already might be past it. So, you want to talk about how we need to go in reverse, we need to do it right now. And Bill Nye saying, no, it's actually great for the economy, you should look forward to it. And, uh, the best part, of course, is Bill Nye calling out the false equivalents on CNN. He's like, look, as much as I love CNN, you guys are doing a disservice right now, and you know you're doing a disservice. This isn't a 50-50 proposition. You have one guy who's paid off by big oil to come on here and lie about how climate change is either not happening or it's awesome. By the way, sometimes they make that claim at the same time. 
Like, you'll have the same climate denier go, climate change isn't happening, but if it is, it's awesome. Which is it? Is it not happening, or is it awesome and it's happening? They don't even care. They just want anything to prevent fucking getting off of oil because they're paid by big oil. So, but Nye's point is, you have me and you have this idiot, so, and you're presenting it as, well, it's just a debate, we're just having a debate. I mean, would you have, like, debate the Holocaust, have somebody who's says, hey, it happened, and we shouldn't let it happen again, and the other person says, it didn't happen. What, would you have that debate? No, because it'd be preposterous, right? But that's your neutrality model. That's your balance model. Everything is 50-50, everything is debatable, just have people on and discuss it. Okay, so why, creationism versus evolution. I say that mockingly, but they actually did that, uh, you know, like five years ago. They would have on somebody who believed in creationism, somebody who believed in evolution, and they'd say, go ahead, you guys debate. But that's not, that. like, the debate is over. You should be having on people to educate the people in your audience about what is true. Of course, evolution is true, so have on somebody to explain the way it functions. But no, it just everything's debatable. They do this with politics, too. We have uh, Republicans and Democrats here. The Republican is going to argue that um, tax cuts for the rich work, and the Democrat's going to argue that they do not. But we had the... Fucking George Bush, massive tax cuts for the rich, and then we had the subprime mortgage crisis in the Great Recession. So, yes, deregulation and tax cuts for the rich lead to that. It led to the, to the Great Depression back in the day. It led to a giant recession after Reagan when he did the same things. We have the facts in on this! But no, let's have the Republican argue deregulation and tax cuts for the rich are awesome. We'll have the Democrat argue that's not the case. Stop presenting it like it's debatable! Some things are not fucking debatable! You want to, it's like having a vaccine debate. If this person says vaccines saved millions and millions of lives. This person says, you know, it, it, they're terrible. That's not debatable. Stop it. Fucking stop it. Now they're doing it with climate change. It's long past that time. Look, CNN is allowed to have on whoever the fuck they want to have on. But just know it's journalistic malpractice and it's lying to you when they do this. This is false equivalence 101. We're going to pretend like this is a 50-50 thing when it's not a 50-50 thing. Okay, then just stop calling yourselves journalists and stop calling yourselves news. Because that's not fucking news. That's propaganda. When we know one side is correct, yes, climate change is happening. But you present it like it's 50-50? Well, that means you're doing what? You're biasing in favor of the conservative direction, the incorrect direction, and giving them way more credit than they deserve, which is why Bill and I said, you, you really want to have a fair, objective debate here? You should have on 98 people who are scientists who say, let me explain to you exactly how this is happening, and have two people who are not, or, or who are paid by big oil who go, no, it's not happening. There are your numbers. You want to present it like the reality is? And by the way, it's even more than that, because he's just citing, when you pull the, the, the scientists on this, no, the reality is when you go to the, the, peer-reviewed studies, it's like 99.8% or 99.9% .9 that say climate change is happening, we're, we're pushing it along and we need to reverse it. So, uh, credit to Bill Nye, they're calling out false equivalence in the home of false equivalence on CNN.